Let me talk a little bit about, yeah, your relationship to some of these incredible physicists who are alive today, right? I mean, so Murray, so, you know, I know you've known Murray a long time and, and you guys have a very deep friendship. Uh, Murray, well, Murray's, you know, Murray's a bit like Oppenheimer. He's, you know, he's, uh, you know, amazingly well-read and knows, I mean, it's hard to come up with a subject that he doesn't know something interesting about. Yeah. And uh, I think people here, like, you know, he's, he's one of the founders of this place. Yeah. And uh, his health's not so good and he doesn't come, you know, around much anymore. But I think a lot of the young people here don't have, they don't have a clear notion of who Murray is. They know he's the Nobel Prize winning physicist. Yeah. Right. Well, Murray's not just one of the great physicists of the 20th century. He's one of the great physicists, period. Yes. And that's pretty hard for people to absorb. Yeah. And the and mind, be above and beyond his physical insight. Yeah. Yeah, Murray's really smart. Uh, George Zweig is a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He told me one time that uh, Murray was possibly the smartest man he'd ever met. Yeah. And these, these are two people. That are both titans. Yeah, and they're, you know, George has a lot, a lot to be irritated with Murray about because they were the, the, the co-inventors of the quark. Mm -hmm. And it may be that, maybe that George even invented it first. Yeah. But he didn't, he called, he called quarks aces. Yeah. But Murray called them quarks. Yeah. <laughs> but that gets to his interest in areas beyond physics. Yeah, because quark comes from Finnegan's Wake, George's. Yeah. And it gets mm -hmm. awake, it was two or three parts.